This is 15 Minutes to Freedom. I'm your host, Ryan Idell, and today's episode is the book review of Philip M. Jones' Exactly What to Say. So today's episode is going to be a little shorter than usual. And I say that because Exactly What to Say is what I would call a bathroom book. And what I mean by a bathroom book is something that you could go to the bathroom, have this sitting in front of your toilet, and have it read in probably two days. Incredibly quick, incredibly impactful, really a phenomenal book for anybody that's in sales, marketing, closing other individuals on doing things that you want to do. This book is really a solid read. It's very, very easy. So the whole premise of this book is essentially going through and coming up with things that are impactful to say at the right time, like using the term just imagine. And then the author goes and say, do you know that any, every decision any human makes is made at least twice? The decision is first made in your mind, hypothetically, before it's ever made in reality. And then the, the author, Philip Jones, goes into explaining as to why the term just imagine has benefit, where you could apply it in your life. Those typically go on for two to four pages. Like there's examples. So one of the examples in this particular part of the book, just imagine how things will be in six months time once you've implemented this. So you would use just imagine to paint that picture prior to setting up the frame of asking someone to buy a good service or product. So just imagine how much better your life will be in six months when you've signed up for my six month coaching program. It's just that easy. But this applies to everything. I mean, you can use it on your kids, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whoever it would be. There's some in here that are a little outdated, like when would be a good time? I think that's, it's, it's good because that's a open, it's a closed ended question. You can't get away from that. You can't say no to that. So if you're in sales, I was always taught to ask an either or question. When would be a good time, morning or afternoon? And when you say afternoon, then you close on a 15 minute increment. And you close on a 15 minute increment because it makes the significance of the agreement less important. Because the assumption is that the phone call will last shorter versus longer. So when would be a good time, morning or afternoon? Person says afternoon. Great, when you say afternoon, are you thinking 315 or 445? 445, great, Mr. So-and-so, please get out a pen for me real quick, I'll wait. You can hear typically the person getting out a pen, putting their phone on speakerphone to type in what you're going to say, and then you go ahead and you ask confirmation of the date, time, and location, and ask them to read it back to you over the phone. That's how I used to use when would be a good time in the sales world. That again, works for everything. Now there are, gosh, 25 different lessons in this book different little things to, to consider, like what happens next. That's such an easy thing to twist into every conversation, like what happens next. Like, like after you've gotten the agreement, you ask what would you like to have happen next? What happens next? And then what makes you say that? that that's to handle an objection because objections are going to come at you left, right, and center, especially in sales. So ask for the validity of the objection. I used to sell cars for a living. So when someone say it's too expensive, well, what makes you say that? And then pause and don't say anything. You don't say anything because you want to draw it out of your customer. What really makes them say that? See, I used to sell Mercedes Benz for a living. I used to sell Bentleys and Rolls Royce. The customers that were coming to buy these cars had Endless ability. Sure, everybody wants to say it's about the money, but it's almost never really about the money. No one is coming to a Mercedes-Benz dealership convinced they can only afford a $200 a month payment. You're just not looking at Mercedes most likely if $200 is your budget. And there's nothing wrong with a $200 a month car payment. If that's what fits your, your lifestyle, that's great. But walking through the door, what makes you say that was one of the greatest objection handling things I could use. One of the greatest tactics. Another one that I loved is, if I can, will you? And again, I can only say this from the scope of automotive sales. If I can, get the numbers to be agreeable. Will you take delivery of the car today? 
I would ask as a trial close when I'm dr- coming back from the test drive, riding in the backseat of the car after trying to get them to say yes 45 times in a 45 minute test drive. I would isolate at that moment to see if I had someone that was ready to buy a car or was just out kicking tires. Now, I admittedly don't think anybody goes to a car dealership just to kick tires. I mean, who wants to spend two, three, four hours messing around with cars? I think if you took the time to drive to a lot that I was working at, you were a motivated buyer, and I was, it was my job to figure out how to get you over the finish line. So that was the easiest way to figure out where we were at. Come back from the test drive. If I can make the numbers agreeable, will you take delivery today? I assume that's a yes. Go ahead and pull right over to the right where it says sold car parking. I literally would have signs up in the dealerships that said sold cars. So now I'm getting secondary affirmations that you're ready to buy a car before we ever get to the negotiation table. And if I've done my job the right way, I'm able to hold more gross profit. Because I don't think gross profit in the automotive world is a, a dirty term. I don't think it's something bad to say. I worked very hard for a living, and I got paid a small percentage of the gross profit of the dealership. Nothing wrong with earning that by creating immense value and showing that I care for the customer. There's one more I want to cover out of this book, and that's just one more thing. That, again, is a term from this book that just one more thing will help you keep the conversation alive if you ever feel that it's dying. If you're going off track as a salesperson and you don't know where to go, Say, and just one more thing, and then come up with another value-added benefit about the good service or product you're trying to get across. Like sales and the sales methodology of what goes into this is, is pretty easy once you get down these terms. So this book, Exactly What to Say by Phil M. Jones, is not a difficult read. It's not in-depth. It's not full of theory. It's practical application on how things work. It, it's things that make great sense to apply to everyday life. So I highly recommend grabbing this, gosh, what is it, 122-page, super simple, small book, because it will change the way that you communicate with others. And you'll find as communication gets easier, every day, you're able to get shit done. Hey guys, Ryan here. Thanks for joining me today. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please head over to iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you consume audio and subscribe to 15 Minutes to Freedom. If this brought you value, please do me a favor and drop me a five-star rating. Then share this podcast with someone who needs to hear it. For additional content, head over to ryannidell.com. That's R-Y-A-N-N-I-D-D-E-L.com.